What's up? Welcome to the Existential Stoic Podcast. There is a fact of life that we are all going to die. Whether we like it or not, no matter what we do, and whether we believe it or not, it's happening. So today we're going to talk about death. I'm Danny. Here with Randy. What's up, Randy? Yo, Danny. This is a very appropriate topic because it is something that everyone can relate to, whether we <laughs> want to or not. <laughs> you know what it is weird, though? I've always found it, like, looking back... Um, especially now, like, you know, 40 years old and all, or whatever, however old I am. Looking back, you know, it is weird how, like, when you're younger, you really don't think you're going to die. Mm-hmm. Like, in, in a, like, in a very, like, I, like, when I, at least myself personally, like, when I look back, like, I really can remember, like, you, you don't think about it in that sense at all. And maybe it's just because, like, maybe it is because you see people that are older than you, so you, like, you know, that assumption that you'll at least make it there, and that seems so far away. Because when you're, like, when you're 10 or even like 18, someone that's 40 seems way older because it's like double your age, you know, or uh, four times your age. Right. So it seems like a long time. But then as mm-hmm. you get older, like, yeah, it gets closer. Well, it's definitely one of the benefits of how easy life is nowadays, because back in the day, they had all those childhood illnesses like scarlet <laughs> fever and bubonic plague and polio and all this stuff that would just like kill like maybe like one out of three children would actually oh, yeah. live. You know? I think people had like seven or ten kids, and by the time like you know they'd have like three left, when, mm-hmm. you know when they were older, it was crazy. And yeah. like you know, yeah, I think people were a lot more aware of it too, and probably comfortable. We're not comfortable like accepting of death because it was so regular occurrence, and you know, and you also had like a town cemetery, so you would you know you could literally go walk and visit people when they you know on their anniversaries and stuff like easily. Whereas now, like you know. People are sometimes shipped, you know, to a different state or country when they die. You know, it's interesting how we handle it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I I was listening to this book called The Comfort Crisis and interesting book. But this guy went to Bhutan, which is the country with the highest uh, growth, uh, gross national happiness. Like they don't really? they don't look at GNP. They don't care how much they're producing. They're actually like 143 out of 160 or something like that in terms of countries. GDP, but their happiness, they're the happiest country in the world. Really? Because I all, that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, because all they focus on is uh, quality of life. And but Which is what we interesting, should focus on, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interestingly enough, so they're a Buddhist country and their life is very centered around death. Like all over on the roads and everything, they have these pyramids that are like little like reminders of death. Uh, the people are reminded to think three times every day about their own death, like at morning, afternoon and night. And uh, because they in in the book, he had it said, like, I, th- I think he was talking with a monk or something like that there. And the monk was saying, you know, imagine you're walking down a mountain trail and at the end of this trail is a cliff that just drops right off. OK. That cliff is your death. We're all walking there. Like, that's where we're all headed. You have no choice. But what you do have a choice is uh, is how you get there. Are you going to take a more scenic route? Are you going to just, maybe you can't take a scenic route. Are you going to just enjoy the route you're on while you go there? Or are you just going to close your eyes and keep walking and then eventually get there? But I was listening to that and I was like, yeah, we should definitely talk a bit more about death because it's something that people very rarely talk about. And uh, it, I mean, it's it's so crazy because I can remember all the funerals that I've gone to where it's like very uncomfortable with everybody there. No one really wants to talk about it, you know, especially if it's like an open casket. Nobody really wants to go look. And then yeah. uh, you don't know how to, like, help the grieving family or what to say to them. It's just a very awkward situation. And people are just like, how soon can I get out of here? Let's go eat. Let's get do something else. So, yeah, it's a very uncomfortable situation. In Let's continue to distract ourselves from it. Pretend like it doesn't happen. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it is funny though, because I think that is a, like that makes sense if you if you have a whole country where you're reminded to think of it three times a day too, you're living your life with that in mind, that's gonna make you choose very differently. I think that's one of the you know, that's a mistake we make too in the West is like, you know, we well probably most of the globe, right? We don't think about death at all. We don't accept it. We hardly even want to confront it. And so we allow ourselves to live life kind of in a haze and we get focused on the wrong things because we're not really thinking about, you know, how am I going to enjoy this time, this this limited time that I have? How can I make it the best? 
we're thinking about other metrics that have nothing to do with that. You know, how can I have the most or how can I be the quick, you know, whatever, like these things that don't matter ultimately in the end that you can't take with you. You can't take any of that stuff with you. So it's like, yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like, it's crazy because we have this, like the same way that we chase money, how we think like, oh, if I have more money, then I'll be happier. We chase longer lives because we're like, oh, if I have the longer life, then that'll be better. But it's like, if you're not enjoying it, what's the point? Like, yeah. whether you die today or whether you die 100 years from now, if it's a terrible life, I would prefer to go today. Like, Wait. Yeah. And you know, it's funny, too, like you hear all the time, like, you know, it's the, even the way we talk about like uh, illness, right? Like when people have terminal illnesses, they have to fight it and they have to keep fighting it. And like one thing that does is it gives the hospitals a ton of money. It does not. I mean. And, and, you know, statistically, it does not increase quality of life because, you know, there's plenty of people where, you know, in their 70s, they're getting chemo. It makes the rest of their life worse and they still die. It doesn't like mm -hmm. make it any better. But, you know, somebody makes a lot of money. off. Of it. But, you know, that idea of fighting it, constantly fighting it, you know, constantly trying to find ways around it. It's like we're so against even like approaching the subject that like it has to be something we're constantly pushing back against, you know, or we're losing. I don't know. It's really weird. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, there was a book that I just finished called, uh, I forget the name of it. I'll come back to that one. But there's another book by Atul Gawand. Oh, yeah. Outlive. I think that was the name of it. Outlive by Peter Atia, who talks about how, yes, like now with all these medical things, we have a longer life, but the quality of life for the end of it is just terrible. It's because yeah. we didn't take care of ourselves the whole time until we got to the breaking point, And then we just have a longer life, but it sucks. So there's no point in, I mean, to me, at least, there's no point in really extending that. And then Atul Gawan has a book talking about end of life care, how like all these things that we do at the end of life don't make our quality of life any nope. better. Yeah. Nope. If people just have, if they, if they're able to spend time with loved ones, if they get some pain medication and just have hospice care, like that's way better than all these experimental treatments and life extensions that just make them in pain for a, a lot longer. And stuck in the hospital usually for a long period yeah. of time. Yeah, it's crazy, actually, when you think about it. But, you know, it's it's how it's sold to us, right? Because throughout your life, whenever you have a problem, they, t they tell you to take the easy way. Here, take this pill instead of doing things like like exercising or like focusing on mental health. And then you get to the I end mean, and that's all you know how to do, right? <laughs> it's I know. Like, it's, cra it's crazy because, like, you know, no doctor will say, you know, there's actually something out there that's better than any pill you could find. It's called exercise. And people are like, nah, fuck, nah, forget that. But it's like, time yeah. for that. like pills <laughs> may make things marginally a little bit better until you get addicted to them or whatever the, the consequences of them are. But exercise is better than pretty much anything else you can do. Yeah. And like, you know, well, you know, it's funny because like, I've been thinking about that a lot too now. It's like, you know, as you get older, you know, you want to stay in shape because like they've already shown like exercise can increase your uh new new neuron growth and stuff it obviously makes you you know healthier long term you can more flexibility and stuff it's just better right and like but you got to start early you can't start super late because you don't have anything any foundation there to help you so it's like yeah mm -hmm. where you're yeah. sold very bad messages i think on death and nobody really mm -hmm. talks about it at all yeah like basically whatever you can do now physically is the best you're ever going to be unless you're putting in a lot of effort to get better. <laughs> yeah. That's that's the yeah. frightening thing that nobody tells you. Yeah, it is kind of true. And it doesn't take yeah. that much either. You know, that's the funny thing. It only takes, I mean, at most like, you know, half an hour, hour a day, you're good. You know, that that's a lot better than nothing. And mm -hmm. I think gotta look at it that way too. But I think that's yeah. true. If you thought about the end, people would be more motivated probably to do this stuff if we thought about it more often. Well, talking about thinking about the end, I thought that it would be fun if we talked about how we'd like to die, what we want our funerals to be like, what we're scared of with death, how to prepare for death, those types of things. Get personal. Okay. You know? How often do people right. talk about this personal stuff? Let's talk about it. Yeah. You I know how say. you would... So, like, oh. obviously, obviously, I mean, the chances of you actually dying how you want to die is whatever but if you could oh, die literally like, how i want to die. yeah like if you could if you could choose <laughs> like if you had your like luxury death vacation destination what would that be i guess you know i mean if i had to choose i guess i would i would prefer if it was like you know no i mean like you know relatively peaceful i guess i never really thought about how the literal how i always assumed that would just happen you know mm. i mean ideally yeah. i guess you know it would be nice if it was like um 
you know, it would be nice if it was like kind of like in your sleep or like quietly, you know, not in pain, not in a, yeah. you know, aggressive pain, not in a, like a horrible accident or something where there's a lot of like maybe potential pain, you know, that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. That'd be, I guess that would, that would be my idea. I never really thought about the actual, like how it would actually happen. I always assumed it would happen. You know? yeah. well, it's, it's, that's a good assumption <laughs> but yeah like like you know like you know either like going in your sleep or something or just like you know i guess old age would be nice if you were still like healthy enough and like something happened that was like kind of like quick would be good uh -huh. i definitely don't yeah. want to end in a hospital like i do not want to be not. that's one thing i know for certain i do not want to be in a hospital and i, I know not same with same with me, like hospice care at home, give me some drugs yeah. and just let me, you know, take the pain away, but definitely not in a hospital. Uh, the, I, I, w I was just thinking right now, like Tyrion Lannister from Game of Thrones, somebody's like, how do you want to die? And he's like, well, preferably surrounded by a scantily clad woman with a goblet of wine or something like that. And that's pretty much how I'd like to go. Like if I could, if I could plan it, yeah, in bed with a beautiful girl and just like I'm out immediately and she doesn't care. That, that's like the best that'd be nice but, yeah. yeah no like no like a, no heart no terrible like emotional scarring or anything left yep. on the other person yeah that would be awesome <laughs> yeah so uh hmm. have you ever thought about uh your funeral yes don't care oh, okay that's Not interesting all. that's interesting yeah because yeah, i i was thinking about this the other day like i do I did make a will. I haven't yet gotten it notarized because that's like, I feel like I haven't done that's that a, yet because that's me procrastinating. I feel like that's like saying I'm definitely going to die when really I'm just deluding myself that I'm really going to die anyways. <laughs> that's official. I know. Once I sign this document, then I'm definitely dying. If I put off signing it, we're OK. But so like I do I do have a little funeral, but I think about it because like I'm going to be dead. It doesn't matter. And honestly, yeah, no. I'd like it. I'd like it to affect the least amount of people possible. You know, like I don't want to have a whole bunch of people coming out of their way to come celebrate my death. Cause it's like, if they didn't celebrate my life, why yeah. bother when I'm dead? That's not going to do anything for me. Like maybe they'll get some closure, but it would just be better off if they heard about it and they were like, Oh yeah, he was a good guy. All right. Shame. He's dead. Yeah. I mean, that's what I said to my, uh, my partner. I said, you know, I don't really care. Like, honestly, you could throw me in a ditch upside down. I really don't care what you do. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter to me at all. And I mean, you know, there's, yeah. there's ways to do it that are helpful. You know, you could do, you know, um, and it just really, I think it more depends. I think that more depends on the people that are left and what kind of closure they want. And I think leaving it open is nice because you leave it open for them to kind of decide like what kind of closure they want would be helpful for them. You know, I don't mm -hmm. really care. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I actually, in my will, I did write something a bit like out there. Uh, cause <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be buried in a coffin or anything like that because yeah. there's no reason to preserve my bones forever. They have those you know? green fear. They have those green ones now where you get buried under a tree and like a blanket and like oh. they plant a tree. Did you ever hear those? I did not. That's an, that's a new thing now too because you know, like cemeteries use a lot of space yeah. and like it's actually like, you know, you're, putting formaldehyde in bodies which is not good to begin with and then you have all this yeah. other crap so they just like wrap you basically in a sheet it's like old style put you in the ground there's no chemicals and stuff and then they plant a tree over you or something oh that sounds yeah. pretty cool and then they yeah. can reuse the space you know after time sorry uh-huh did you ever see the movie due date with zach galifianakis and robert downey jr where they Part travel of it, across seen the whole it's kind of it's kind of like planes trains and automobiles but a modern version of it well yeah. anyways so in the movie Zach Galifianakis' dad dies and he, he's keeping his uh, ashes in a coffee can and he doesn't want to get rid of him. Like he keeps saying he'll like dump him in the in the Mississippi River because he loved like uh, cars and hookers or something like that. Or he'll do And like he never he never actually does it. And then there's a very touching mo moment at the end of the movie where like he releases his dad's ashes into the Grand Canyon. You see like them going away in the in the wind. And I was like. That would be really cool. Play Spirit in the Sky by Norman Greenbaum and just toss my ashes to the wind and that would be a cool way to go. That'd be a good way so to that's, go. Yeah, that's the that's in my will for if I actually ever get that signed and then go on to die nice. that way. There you yeah. go. Cremation's good to go too because it doesn't take up a lot of space. Oh. <laughs> it's, you know, it's easy. Mm -hmm. That's the other yeah. thing. I don't, I never really like personally, and this is just personal, I never like open caskets. I do not like them. 
uh, you know. Dude, I do I not. Do I do not want to remember someone when they're freaking dead. Well, that's you like know, I've that's seen. A... I've seen so many dead animals, and their faces are all like, like in terrible <laughs> positions because they died the night before, and then the person brings them in, in the morning, and it's like that's not how you want to remember. Someone. Yeah, Reagan Mortis says it, and all. and you know, I never liked it too because it like like no matter how good a job the people do that are handling it, like you don't look the same, dude. Like, and they they always look like cartoony to me or something, or like old fashioned, but. It's also like, yeah, it's just I'd rather have the image of the person in my mind, not that. And that then overtakes that image in a way. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm-hmm. Hard to get by it. You want to hear the worst story? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. So one like Saturday or Sunday morning, I went into the clinic that I was, the vet clinic that I was working at. And I was like, who brought barbecue? And <laughs> freaking terrible. These pets got caught in a house fire. Oh, but God, it literally, really? it literally smelled like barbecue in the uh, in the clinic. That was terrible. That sucks. <laughs> that's horrible. Yeah, freaking terrible. Yeah, see, that's hard to deal with, man. That's a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Death is death sucks, and like, oh my gosh, yeah, dealing with it sucks. Uh, as, as well, that's vet. the other. Well, that's the thing about the modern world, right? It's like, you know, if you go back back in the day, you know, your pets died, you had to deal with it. I remember when I was younger. We Your were family died. Back. You had to deal yeah. with it. There was no well, hospital. I mean. You were taking yeah. care of them until they died. I literally, yeah, I was going to say that too. Like, you know, we were so close to it because it was a part of like everyday life. We had to handle it. Like there might be somebody in town to call for like an emergency, but they, they're not going to do anything for that. You buried them. You took care of everything. Same with your pets. And like now there's, there's somebody you go to. There's services. There's like, you know, where you just take it, you take it and you kind of forget about it. So you're always removed from it. Just like, you know, in the same way that we're removed from, like, you know, we go to the grocery store to buy meat. You don't see the cow. You see everything prepackaged. It's like you can totally disassociate it from the animal. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like, I think that's very strange that we've done that. But we've, it's made things easier. But at the same time, it's made us, I think, very uh, naive about the reality of life, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it, it's interesting. That was mentioned in the book, uh, The, uh, the Comfort Crisis, how... You know, a lot of people have something against hunting. And, you know, I'll be honest, I have a very strong thing against killing other creatures because I had to do it yeah. a shitload and I don't like doing it. But it and turns people are out asking that, you to do it. <laughs> well, it turns out that like okay. the majority of vegans and vegetarians live in societies where they don't have to actually where they just go to a supermarket and can buy meat. People who actually yeah. live in nature where you have to like go go and find it. Yeah, they prefer to eat meat because it's high it's more calorically dense. Otherwise also you're give. just gonna starve. And like if you go up to places like Alaska, like you get more from the animal too. They use other stuff from it. And like, you know, there's a difference to like uh, you know, sport hunting, like totally against the like if it's necessity hunting, that's different. Like you are using it at least and it's mm-hmm. like, you know, that's the same as like yeah. raising something on your own, I guess, and then eating it. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're so far removed from it. It's crazy. It is really interesting. Yeah. Really weird. Mm-hmm. So anything that scares you about death? I Aside mean, from I dying? I... <laughs> <laughs> I guess mostly like the, uh, you know, the physicality of it, right? Like the, the, what you might go through. Or what actually scares me the most is the potential for it, not necessarily dying, but the deterioration beforehand. Because I think one of my biggest fears is, two of my biggest fears are losing my mind. So, you know, bad dementia, something like that, um, or being in a coma. Because I have really bad, uh, I've had my whole life really bad um, sleep paralysis, which Mm -hmm. I get often. um, Mm -hmm. And that has made me so afraid of a coma. (laughs) Yeah. um, You know terrified it would be like that which is like yeah. horrible so yeah 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 i don't want to do you think that. if you're in a coma do you think you realize it or no i don't know but i realize it when i have sleep paralysis so that's what is makes uh, me afraid of a coma if that makes sense yeah yeah definitely yeah, yeah that would suck if you were in a coma and you knew about it yeah you know and you're yeah. like let me you're like a mime trying to get out of the box well, that's what let it feels like out. when you have sleep paralysis you you you're paralyzed, but you also hallucinate. So it's like really weird and you, uh-huh. you feel trapped. Sometimes it's like yeah. 
you know, some be held down or something or tied. You know, there's all kinds of weird things that happen. But yeah, it's it's crazy. Mm-hmm. It sucks. Yeah, so yeah. that does scare me too. Well, Beyond that, that though, I mean, you know, I think reading the philosophy for so long has helped a lot. And I think, you know, one of the things I've always liked is the existentialists, um, you know, they focus on the fact that we just have one life and we're going to die. And that can be, that can be scary, but I think when you accept it, it can also be freeing because it's like, you know, oh, I have one chance and I'm going to go. So who cares? Like you can kind of live it however you want because the reality is, is this ends. There's nothing like there's nothing that's going to like it's not like it's on repeat. It's not like it goes on forever. Try to live your best life because you have one shot. Live it as limited time and, you know, do it. You know, what's right for you. Don't don't wait for other stuff, <laughs> you know, because it's like you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. So that, that was sure always helpful. Is. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I'm scared of. uh Like so, some type of long drawn out death. Like particularly torture or something like that. I think that would be absolutely terrible. Well, hopefully that doesn't and, happen. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but like that would be that would be terrible. <laughs> or uh, being like overly dependent upon others. Like I get it. As you get older, mm-hmm. sometimes you have to. But that just like I would find that really difficult because I have a hard time asking for help from others. Yeah, and it'll probably be like one final life lesson where I have to be very dependent upon others, and that's like my final breakthrough in life. But I really don't want that. <laughs> no, no, I don't want that either. You know, <laughs> you know what's funny is the, the um, when I used to teach biomedical ethics a lot, like the Netherlands, they have um, they allow active euthanasia, so you can get you know you can request it. And so when they have when people go in with long term illness and stuff, death is always on the table and it's an option. Whereas like you know here, if you go to the hospital here and you have a long term illness, that's not an option. You can't request that you just be euthanized. So they said, like, and you have to go through hurdles to get freaking pain drugs so that you can yeah. just be like knocked out well, because doctors yeah. were prescribing that stuff too heavily. And now they don't prescribe it at all. Yeah. Now we go to reverse. Right. So now we yeah. totally turn it back. Yeah. Anyway. But so one of the things they found that was like in that country, like the end of life care is like way better because people have instead of having no choice, you have autonomy. Whereas like I think that's other, one of my other fears here is like. You get stuck in the hospital. It's like you lose all your, you lose all like power to make choices to some extent, especially if you are older and like you're sick and like you're not like conscious all the time and stuff. They just do shit. And I don't want that to happen either. Cause mm-hmm. I feel like you, you lose all your choice. You know, it's not your life anymore. It's somebody else's. Yeah. I remember like when I was, when I was young, my grandmother was in the hospital and like she fell and hit her head. So people weren't sure if she was like, really there but like one time we were talking and i was young so i don't there wasn't anything that i could really do i was like less than 18 i think but she was like you gotta get me out of here like help me and i was like i'm like what am i supposed to do like how do i how do i even deal with this and yeah it's just crazy because you're effectively trapped though and that's the Mm -hmm. crazy part and they can just like override your decisions it's insane if they just think you're not with it yeah it is scary Mm -hmm. So that yeah. that's another thing. Yeah. No one's got to happen either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what so like we talk about death. What can, what do you how does knowing about your own death make you live a better life? I think you, just you personally, be a... not not like this theoretical thing. Because oh, okay. I'm saying but, you, yeah. Danny. How yeah, does knowing person. about your death help with your life? And then you helps... can ask me the same question, or if you want, you can ask me first. No, I mean, it's it's fine. Okay, I think it helps. I think it helps me stay focused on living a better life and living my best life and living my own life. Because if you're not aware of it, if you think you have forever, you put things off. It's like that whole problem of like you know, when you think you have forever, you know, with time, you just can you can just put things off, procrastinate. You can do things you don't want to do, or like you know, you can uh, settle for things because you think, well, I can always change it later. And to some extent, that is true. Like, yeah, you can always change something later. But the longer you wait, the less laters you have and less opportunities you have to do that. So I think it, it adds a sense of not a, like, I want to say immediacy, but not in a bad way of like, you know, you should live your life. And it's so easy to forget. Like, I notice even myself, like you have to remind yourself all the time. I think that three times a day is a smart thing because 
it's very easy for us as like you know conscious beings we don't think of that like all the time so it's easy to kind of forget it and then your decision making can go awry so you have to kind of remind yourself of it but i think it can be very helpful for just being yourself being who you are and being more true to like what matters to you mm. what about <laughs> yeah, you it. yeah i mean similarly it's kind of doing the stuff like i i don't really have a bucket list like on a, yeah, on a regular because it, it, it is stupid it is stupid yeah. like i i told you the story about the dude who's like 80 something years old and i was going to do this past year something that's on his bucket list and i was like well it happens this weekend <laughs> let's go and he's like oh i can't this weekend i'm like dude like i didn't say it to him but i'm thinking how many Somewhere more I'll do it next gonna... decade yeah yeah i know right <laughs> so uh but it's like every once in a while i try and sit down like what type of things would i do I really want to do in my life? But I'm pretty active doing them because if I don't do them now, then when? Because it's, I mean, it's its easy to think like I'm going to die someday, but that's not true. I could literally die today. Yeah. And that's like, that's one thing that I try and remind myself is like, you know, if I died today, would I be happy with my life so far? If I was going to die in six months from now, what what would I do differently? You know, knowing that I'm eventually going to walk off that cliff and die, what do I need to get done in my life? Who do I need to be? Yeah, that's a good one. Though. I like that because you're right. You know, it is even when we even when we're aware of it, it can still seem so far off that it can still be, you know, it's so distant that you don't even like, or you think it's so distant. It's not immediate. Yeah, I think I like that. Mm -hmm. That is true. You know, and it, it and is a case. You don't know when it's going to happen. Yeah. And also, like, I I find that it helps me with relationships because, I, like, especially when people are getting older, uh, friends and family, as they get older, because somebody will say, like, oh, they're not doing so well. Is there anything you want to say to them? And I'm like, no, like, I treat every interaction I have with them as if it could be the last because it could yeah. very well be the last. But, like, some people are, are holding off, like, not saying the things they want to say until the deathbed confession. And, and yeah. it's just like. Why you be if you wait, you're only going to kick yourself later. So you might as well have those conversations now. Let them know how much they mean to you. Talk out whatever things you need to talk out with them because who knows how long you got. No, that's true, right? And I think that's also another thing that gets in the way of so many of our interpersonal relationships and stuff is this, this semblance of time and I'll deal with it later because things yeah. are hard and we don't want to deal with them. So we push them off. And I think it makes things more pressing and more important to do now. And it makes you more, I think maybe that's it too. It makes you more present because if it can happen at any moment, you kind of have to be more conscious of what you're doing and aware when you're doing it rather than wasting time, you know? Mm -hmm. It is mm -hmm. hard. It's like, you know, we all want to live a good life, but there's no like, there's no like, you know, guidebook for how to do that. And I think it's different for everybody. So you have to kind of be aware that your life has you know, it's not forever and you don't have infinite time because then you make the right choices, hopefully, or at least you're motivated to make them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. I got, I got a question, maybe a difficult question to answer, but if you were to die in a week, mm -hmm. what would you do this week? That would be like freaking awesome. Die in a week? Huh. Something that would just be like, ah, yes. I, I know what mine is. I'll just, I'll just say it because while you're well, thinking, I so like I, I I say this because mine is kind of like pretty lame. Like other people, other people might be like, oh, I'd go travel to Paris or like I'd go hike the mountain. I'd I'd have a giant freaking pizza and a big thing of ice cream, and that would be, that would be it. That would be like all right, and like cheese puffs and uh, goldfish, and that would be an iced tea. Cool. Yeah, I would just I would just pick out. Why not, day, right? Until I yeah. felt sick, and then that would be it. And I'd be like, okay, kill me now. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I would change that much. I guess I wouldn't go to work, and I would, uh, you know, I would like to go. Oh, probably, well, yeah. maybe, like, I'd like to go to some, maybe, I don't know, somewhere, maybe, like, Alaska or something would be cool. But, like, mm. you know, something like that. I don't know. I don't know that I would go anywhere, though. I probably would, you know. Yeah. I don't know, probably just hang out with people. It's tough. It is hard to say. But I think that's a good, that is a good, like, 
thinking like that is a good way to find out like things you want to do or things you're not doing now. I feel like I'm doing a lot of things I wanted to do now. So it's good. I feel, but I think this is the point, right? If you think about it more, get to a point where you're doing things that you want to do and your life is gen like you have a better mentality about life overall. You know, it's it's funny too because like I just was reading this thing on uh, I think it's MIT that they, they found out how to like reverse mice's age. Literally, mm -hmm. they can like mm -hmm. click. Uh, uh, God knows what it does to the psychology of the mice, but they, they found out they can like <laughs> literally reverse their age like by half. And like you know, they're talking about this now. It's gonna be like, like Benjamin Button mice. <laughs> yeah. But then like, and apparently like it's. As far as I read and what they understand, like it doesn't cause any like major problems that they know of yet or anything. But like they've had this mouse living like way longer than it should be alive, which who knows what that does. But like, you know, this whole idea of like fighting it, but like, do we even want that? Do you want a world of people that don't go? I mean, it's already overcrowded. Like it's kind of funny when you think about it, but like, what good does that do us? You know, like in some sense, and if it lasts forever, you know. Do you have any reason to live? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's your yeah. point. Yeah. I remember I, I heard this quote the other day that like a rose would be the most annoying weed if it didn't die. Because it's got yeah. all those thorns and stuff. Like, sure, it smells great and it looks pretty, but it's got all those thorns. And if it never dies, you're just going to have these thorn bushes all over the place. So, like, it's the same thing with people. Could you even imagine if people didn't die? My goodness. No. And mm -hmm. like, you know, I could imagine like if like, you know, if you're trying to, I don't know, like, because uh, I, I or, you know, somebody was talking about space travel, and they're saying, like, you know, if we really wanted to travel in space, we need to genetically engineer people, right, so that they can handle it and longer. And, like, that might be something you use for that case, right, where you had to go somewhere far or something. But, like, otherwise, and who knows about psychology? I mean, that's that aside, it might make you totally crazy doing mm. that to yourself. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, totally. But that's, like, another thing of constantly trying to fight it rather than just facing the fact that it's part of it. That Everything else die. does. Yeah. What's that? I mean, how, like, you have to wonder how good are some people's lives that they want to live forever? Like, yeah. could it possibly be that good? They don't have any problems. I mean, aside, aside from freaking Matthew McConaughey, like, whose life is that good that they want to live forever? He had a one hard year. <laughs> I know, right? <sighs> yeah, that's the other thing, right? It's like, I don't know. It's funny, like, isn't it? I think that's always part of what makes it so valuable is that it's not forever. It is short and it can be hard because it can be, you know, in some, some cases it can be really short and that's a shame, but like, yeah, I think that should give us motivation to do our best. No, here's, here's an interesting thing that was in that book, the comfort crisis is kind of eye opening as to how, how impactful our lives are. So if you, if you plot using the calendar year, the whole entire history of the universe, Okay. All right. So in one year. Yeah, in one year. Humans do not come in until December 31st at 12:59 and 33 seconds. <laughs> That's all of humanity. <laughs> like <laughs> it's like 37 seconds or no, 27 yeah. seconds. Yeah. Jesus. That's all yeah. of humanity yeah. in the course of the universe. So like thinking that you matter and that your life is great, you're just kind of deceiving yourself well that's the other thing too i think that thinking about death can be very helpful because it also makes you not take stuff so seriously and gives you perspective on what really matters you know like does this stuff matter no because you know can't take it with you it's all going to be gone and chances are even if you are remembered you don't know it so it doesn't matter <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know like yeah and, and most of that's like a, a happenstance of like a lot of, you know, it's, it's circumstantial and, you know, has nothing to do with what you did usually. It's just, it is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at a lot of ancient authors, a lot of them we know about just because their stuff survived, you know, for whatever right. reason. It, you know, it might not be that they were the best. It might be that they just happened, to, their stuff happened to, you know, exist now or is it still extant, you know? Mm hmm yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty much all I had to say about death. Anything else you have to say about death? I think you should think about it. Yeah, it's a good thing to think about. It does make Be sense. Aware. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it, you know, I think if we, if we think about it more too, we'd be better at dealing with other people's and our, you know, and 
things close to us when they die, you know, better about it. Okay. Good. So I was, I was also interesting thing. I was also listening to this book called, uh, I don't want to talk about it. It's like about male depression and how men are not allowed to be depressed, but yeah. according, according to, Oh, I, so like interesting thing from this book is like, they were, they were like interviewing male and female college students. And when the female students admitted to their roommate that they were depressed, they got a whole bunch of compassion and like their, you know, they, their community got closer. When male college students admitted to their roommate that they were depressed, they got ostracized. So like, <laughs> get out of here. I know, get out of here. But uh, so like, they were talking about how like male uh, depression is very underdiagnosed because it's not generally what what you see we're not allowed to do it all that different stuff but one of the th one of the four things that needs to be done in the dsm-4 in order to be considered depression is thinking about death on a regular basis for like a two-week period and i'm like but hang on like that's also how you can have a really good life that's funny yeah. wait so like do they mean thinking about like death in the sense of like ending it or like just Death. I think probably like death and suicide and ending it. Oh, okay, but okay. I was also thinking because it's also very helpful to think about death in yeah, terms yeah. of like it's going to happen. So how do I make the best of my life? Oh, and those are two different, very different ways of thinking about it too. You know, yeah. like it, there's a big difference between thinking about wanting it to end versus the recognition that it will happen. You know, I mean mm -hmm. that's a big difference, and I think you know making that distinction is important too. Yeah, there's also yeah. a big difference between wanting to die and not wanting to live like yeah. sometimes whatever you're going through in life is just too painful and you don't feel like living like that happens all the freaking time but yeah, is, if the like... pain was removed you'd probably want to live yeah. whereas like that's totally different from wanting to die actively yeah yeah, so, yeah. there you have yeah. it all right there you have it that's death that is death so there you have it that's death uh thanks for listening check us out on youtube or wherever you get your podcast I'm going to let you do the thing about the thing. Go ahead. And if you guys have a few minutes, we have a questionnaire down below. We're looking to develop something that's going to help you have the best year of your life. If you would give us a couple minutes of your input, when we do have it created, you will get it for absolutely free. So there's a link down in the show notes or the description. Take a couple minutes. Help us out there. Oh, that was a lot better. Also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Please like, share, subscribe. It helps us out a lot. We'll be back later this week with a quick fix. Until then, no. later, Andy. Later, Danny. <laughs>